In this video, I'm going to go over chapter 14, nouns and modifiers. So adjectives usually modify a noun. Adjectives uh, describe a noun. So I bought an expensive book. Expensive is the adjective that modifies the noun book. I bought a grammar book. Grammar is the adjective that modifies book. In other words, it's a noun. In this case, grammar is a noun that acts like a that acts like an adjective that modifies book. He works at a shoe store. So shoe is a noun that acts like an adjective or used as an adjective that modifies the noun store. I bought an expensive grammar book. So here you have an adjective then you have a noun that's used as an adjective, and then you have a noun. So here you have adjectives can modify nouns. Uh, nouns can modify other nouns, such as grammar book, washing machine. And grammar is a noun that is used as an adjective to modify another adjective. A noun that is used as an adjective is always in its singular form. So you cannot say shoes store. You have to say shoe store. Uh, expensive grammar book. So you can't say expensive grammar's book. And so here, my grandmother is a wise woman. So wise is the adjective. English is not my native language. Native is a noun used as an adjective to modify language. The busy waitress poured coffee into the empty cup. So busy is an adjective that modifies waitress. Empty is an adjective that modifies cup. A young man carried the heavy suitcase for Fumiko. So young is the adjective that modifies the noun man, and heavy is this heavy is the adjective that modifies the noun suitcase. So this is how we do adjectives. So adjectives modify a noun. And uh, nouns can also be used as an adjective to modify another noun, such as in washing machine. Here you have washing uh, is a noun and then uh, used to modify machine. So here you have um, washing machine. So word order of adjectives. So how do we know which adjective to use first? So in A, two adjectives, large and red, a large red car. So large and red modify a car. Adjectives follow a particular order. In this example, A, an adjective size or large comes before color, red. A beautiful young woman, a beautiful red car, a beautiful Greek island. So the adjective beautiful expresses an opinion. Opinion adjectives usually come before all other adjectives. Opinion precedes age. Opinion precedes color. Opinion precedes nationality. So opinion adjectives come before all other adjectives. So a beautiful young woman, a beautiful red car. So beautiful is an opinion because some people would think she's ugly. So that's why if you have an opinion in which some people think that's ugly, some people think that's beautiful, that's an opinion adjective. So all of these opinion adjectives like dangerous, difficult, dirty, expensive, favorite, good, happy, honest, important, interesting, strong, wonderful. You can Google a list of opinion adjectives if you want to increase your vocabulary. And so these opinion adjectives always proceed or come before age, color, and nationality. So always remember that opinion adjectives come before age, color, nationality, and size. And so this is the order, usual word order of adjectives. Opinion, size, age, color.
color, nationality, and then you have your noun. So you can remember it as as, uh, os, as, ag, osagna, osagna, okay? That's one way to remember. Osagna is the word order of adjectives. Opi and osagna stands for opinion, beautiful, delicious, kind, size, large, tall, little, age, young, old, middle age, color, red, blue, black, nationality, Greek, Chinese, Mexican, and then you have your noun, uh, and, th and then the then metal, uh, material, metal, glass, plastic. So, osagnama, okay, osagnama. And so a noun is usually modified by only one or two adjectives, although sometimes there are three. Some delicious Mexican food, a small glass vase, a kind old Chinese man. It is very rare to find a long list of adjectives in front of a noun. So this is rare, a beautiful, small, old, brown, Greek, metal coin. And so here you have osagna, opinion, size, age, color, nationality, material. So that is the order of adjectives. A tall glass vase, some delicious Thai food, some red small potatoes, or small oh, small red potatoes, yes, because opinion, because size comes before, um, so opinion precedes age, opinion precedes color, opinion precedes nationality. So a uh, and then size. So size, and then you have uh, size, and then color. So small red tomato. So that's how we do number three. Small red tomato. I don't know if I did it wrong the first time. Although you're going to hear people say red small tomatoes, small red tomatoes, that kind of stuff. If people are talking really fast. And then here, some big old brown cows, a narrow dirt road, a serious young woman, a long black, oh, not a, sorry, long black, oh, beautiful long black hair, uh, famous, a famous work of art, a famous, an old famous Chinese work of art. So that's how you would do it. So here you would have uh, Hong Kong is an important Asian city. I'm wearing some old, comfortable shoes. Uh, Tommy was a naughty little boy when he broke his favorite toy. Anne has a warm woolen wool blanket on her uh, bed. Our dorm is a tall red, uh, that's a tall red brick building. The computer is a, a wonderful modern invention. My nephew has good neighbors. He is always a serious young man, a respectful young man, especially to his elders. Jack carries a large blue, um, cup with him. So here you have uh, how you would how would you um, correct any of these any of these mistakes. Okay, so always remember it as osagna. So that osagna stands for opinion, size, age, G, and then uh, N and M. So here I, I forgot to remember the first three. So here you have Osagna, opinion, size, age, color, nationality, material. So that's how you're gonna remember uh, the usual order of adjectives. So that's, that's how you do it, Osagna. So. Expressions of quantity, all, 
all of, most of, some of, almost all of. Rita ate all of the food on her plate. Mike ate most of his food. Susie ate some of her food. Matt ate almost all of his food. So, and, and here you would say all of means that you ate 100% of the food. Most of means that you ate a large part of the food, but not all of the food. And some of means that you ate a small or medium part of the food. Almost all of means that you ate about 95% of the food. And all of means you ate all of the food. So all of these um, quant expressions of quantity express how much or how, how uh, express how much or what the quantity of food that you ate that night. You cannot say Matt ate almost of his food. So you have to follow the construction that's, that's given. All of, most of, some of. So all of, most of, some of, all of, almost all of, and almost is used with all. All cannot be omitted. So it's, this is just colloquial English as English has evolved through the centuries. There's no rhyme or reason for it. Why, it's, why you have to have of. All of these numbers are even. One, three, five, seven. All of these numbers are odd. One, three, four, six, seven. Some of these numbers are odd. One, three, four, six, seven. And then here, uh, some of these numbers are odd. So some of the birds in picture A, almost all of the birds in picture A are flying. In picture B, um, almost some of the birds are flying. And then picture C, all of the birds in picture C are flying. And then I guess you could have some of the birds, because you know, that's like half-half. Some of the birds in picture D are flying. So these uh, are expressions of quantity, some of, all of, almost all of. All of my work is finished. All of my friends are kind. Some of my homework is finished. Some of my friends are coming to my uh, birthday party. And so in A, all of my friends or my work, so all of plus a singular noun and a singular verb. All of plus a plural noun and a plural verb. So here, all of my work, so this is a singular subject that takes a singular verb. All of my friends, this is a plural subject which takes a plural verb. Some of my homework is a singular subject, so it takes a singular verb. Some of my friends, this is a plural subject, so it takes a plural verb. So when you have a plural subject, that takes a plural verb. When you have a singular subject, you take a singular verb. That's known as subject-verb agreement. So always the subject comes after the quantity. All of my, all of my, some of my. So the subject comes after of, okay? So when a subject includes an expression of quantity, the verb agrees with the noun that immediately follows up. So common expressions of quantity, all of, almost all of, a lot of, half of, most of, some of. So all of that money is mine. All of the windows are open. We saw one movie. Some of the movie was interesting. Some of the movies were interesting. A lot of those words are new to me. A lot of the vocabulary are new to me. Half of the glasses are empty. Half of the glasses are full. Half of the glass, in other words, one glass, is empty. So that's this one. Almost all of the air in the city is polluted. Almost all of the oceans in the world are polluted. So here, in the world, is a prepositional phrase. So that doesn't count. So therefore, the subject of the sentence, oceans, are polluted. Most of the students arrive on time. Most of our mail arrive in the morning. 
And so here, um, non-count, that's a non-count now. And so 100% would be all of, all of, 80% would be like some of, uh, almost all of, almost none of, some of. So that's how you would use uh, that, the, the different expressions of quantity. So one of my friends. So anything with one of is followed by a specific plural noun, as in a. It is incorrect to follow one of with a singular noun. Sam is one of my friends. Sam is one of my friend. And so this, this is just, um, and then if you're going to ask me why, the reason for why this is, that's because you're uh, picking out one friend out of a group of many friends. So that's what this means, okay? Sam is one of a group of many friends. And then as English has evolved, it, it means that Sam is just, uh, it's, Sam's not the person's, that person's only friend. He's got many friends, and Sam is just one of those friends. He's just one of them. So that's why you have Sam is one of my friends. It is incorrect to say Sam is one of my friend, because you have many friends. One of my friends is here. So when one of plus a plural noun is the subject of a sentence, it is followed by a singular verb. So remember, I said that here, if you have friends, then you've got to have are, plural subject, it's a plural verb. Well, one of, we're just only, you're not talking about all of the friends. You're only talking about Sam. You're only talking about one out of many friends. And that's, this is similar to a collective noun, okay, in, in, in theory, in which it looks plural, but it's actually singular. So it's very, very similar to that. So one of, just like everybody, everyone, everything. That looks plural also, but it also takes a singular, also takes a singular verb. So, yeah, so none of the students was late. None of the students were late. So here you have D, not one of the students was late. None of equals not one of. The verb following none of plus a plural noun can be singular, as in both are correct. Okay, this means that if you're talking about none of all the students were late. So it depends on the, the writer. Are you just pointing out that one student? Okay, then it would be singular verb. Or are you just, or you're pointing out all of the students as a group? Then it would be plural. So in this case, none of the students um, depends on the writer. Just like you have police, the police is in, is on the way. The police are on the way. Also, same thing as collective nouns. If you're just talking about out of all of the police, one officer, then it's singular. If you're talking about all of the police as a group, like collective nouns, then it becomes, um, oh sorry, it's the other way around. Yeah, so it's just like collective nouns. So here, if you're talking about all, uh, every single one as a group, then it becomes plural. So both are correct. So one of my teachers is Ms. Lopez. This means that you're only talking about that one teacher. Therefore, you have a singular, uh, singular verb. One of my classmates is um, Stephanie, oh, or the name of a student is one of my classmates. One of my books is red. One of my books has a green cover. Here you're just talking about the one book. Los Angeles is my favorite place in the world. Or Washington DC is one of my favorite places in the world. So we're talking about one place. Therefore, it becomes a singular verb. One of the students in my class, it always comes late. So here you're just talking about one student. Jan is one of my best friends. So here Jan, out of all of your friends, is your best friend. So just talking about one person, therefore it is singular. Uh, let's see, Brady Bunch 
was one of the best programs on TV in the 1970s. Jan is one of the most uh, famous people in the world. One of my biggest problems is my inability to understand spoken English. Uh, the LA Times is one of the leading newspapers in Los Angeles. None of the students in my class speak English very well because they're all ESL students. None of the furniture in this room is soft and comfortable. Furniture is a non-count noun. Non-count nouns cannot be made plural and therefore is always singular. So none of the furniture in this room is soft and comfortable. One of my favorite subjects is English. Um, let's see. Uh, the Eiffel Tower is one of the most interesting monuments in the world. One of the most interesting uh, monuments, uh, one of the most interesting of my friends is Stephanie. Okay, so some of my books are on my desk. One of my books is blue and green. My favorite colors are red and yellow. Sue's favorite color is green. One of my favorite colors is red. Some of the students in my class have laptop computers. One of my students in Pablo's class has a mustache. My best friends live in Brazil. One of my best friends so that's a, uh, lives in Australia. So if you're talking about one person, then it takes a singular verb. If you're referring to many different things, then it becomes a plural subject and it takes a plural verb. None of the mail is for you. And if you have a non-count noun, then it's singular, always takes a singular verb. Then when you have a plural subject like letters, which is a non-count noun, then it takes then it's plural subject takes a plural verb. So that's that's how you uh, would use all of this. Indefinite pronouns. I didn't say anything. I did. I said nothing. And it's incorrect to have a double negative and say I didn't say nothing. So when it when you already have a, a negative in a sentence, then you. In other words, if you have I did not, and then you want to say have a, a indefinite pronoun afterwards, then you have to use anything. So anything is used when the verb is negative. Nothing is used when the verb is affirmative. I said nothing. And you can't say, I didn't say nothing. You can't have two negatives in the same sentence. I didn't see anyone at the park. Bob saw no one at the park. So anything and nothing, it's with things. And then if you're going to talk about people, then you have to say, and, and if you're talking about people, and the sentence is already negative, then you would say, I didn't see anyone at the park. So anyone is used when the verb is negative. No one is used when the verb is aff affirmative. So Bob, Bob didn't see no one in the park. That's not correct English. So you gotta say, Bob didn't see anyone at the park. So let's practice. Uh, Jim doesn't know anything about butterflies. Jim knows nothing about butterflies. Jim didn't tell anyone about her problems. So here, when you have a negative, you have to say anyone. And then if it's a positive verb, you use no one. Jean told no one about her uh, problem. There's nothing in my pocket. It's empty. There isn't anything in my pocket. Liz went to a shoe store, but she didn't buy anything. Liz bought shoes or something at the shoe store. I got something 
in the mail today. Oh, I got nothing in the mail today. My mailbox was empty. George sat quietly in the corner. He didn't speak to anyone. The office is closed from 12 to 1. Um, there is there during the, there is nothing during the lunch hour. I know nothing about nuclear physics or I don't know anything. So you can either have, I know nothing about nuclear physics or I don't know anything about nuclear physics. So I know nothing and I don't know anything. No one was at home last night. Both my roommate and I were out. Joan has a new apartment. She doesn't know anyone in her apartment building. Do you know anything about Iowa? Iowa? I know nothing about Iowa. It's an agricultural state that is located between the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. Mary bought something at the store. Jim talked to someone after class. So in a statement, use something or someone. Mary did not buy anything at the store. Jim didn't talk to anyone after class. In a negative sentence, use anything or anyone. Question, did Mary buy something at the store? Did Mary buy anything at the store? Did Jim talk to someone after class? Did Jim talk to anyone after class? So in a question, use either some, something, someone, or anything, anyone. So let's practice. I have something in my pocket. Do you have anything in your pocket? Ken does not have anything in his pocket. I bought something when I went shopping yesterday. Rosa didn't buy anything when she went shopping. Did you buy something when you went shopping? My roommate is speaking to someone on the phone. Yuko didn't tell anyone her secret. I talked to someone at the phone company about my bill. Did you talk to anybody about your problem? And Kim gave me something for my birthday. Paul didn't give me anything for my birthday. Did Paul give you something for your birthday? My brother is sitting at his desk. He's writing an email to someone. The hall is empty. I don't see anyone. Listen, do you hear a sound, a noise? No, I don't. I don't hear anything. Did you talk to Jim on the phone last night? No, I didn't talk to anybody. Where is your bike? Someone stole it. Okay, so every, every student has a book. All of the students have books. And so uh, in every, you have a singular noun plus a singular verb. And so every of the students has a book. Every students have books. So every is not immediately followed by of. So you can't say every of. Every is always followed by a singular noun, not a plural noun. So you can say every students. Everyone has a book. Everybody has a book. So everyone and everybody have the same meaning. And every and everyone and everybody is always followed by a singular, singular uh, verb. So here you have everyone and everybody are followed by a singular verb. I looked at everything in the museum. Everything is okay. So everything means each and everything. In other words, every singular item. Everything is followed and because everything refers to each item individually, therefore you have a singular subject that's followed by a singular verb that is a subject verb agreement. So here you have all of the books on this desk are mine. Every book on this desk is mine. All of the students are here today. 
Every student is here today. Every teacher at my college gives tests regularly. All of the teachers at my college give a lot of tests. Every child in, in my country uh, likes uh, bedtime stories. All of the children in my country know that story. All of the people in this class are studying English. Everyone in this class wants to learn English. Do, the, do all of the students in this class speak English well? Does every person in the world uh, like to listen to music? Or do people in the world like to listen? Oh, this one is, um, this one is plural. Okay, so do people, uh, do, does every person in the world like to listen to music? Um, do all of the people in the world enjoy dancing? Does everybody in the world have enough to eat? Every city in Sweden has a good transportation system. One of the students in my class is from Iceland. This isn't easy. So even for me, I have to think about it before I do it. So, so if you find this really hard, you're not alone. So linking verbs. So here you have a linking verb is not a action verb. Okay, it's a state of verb. In other words, it just states what something is. It, it, sta it just links the noun to the uh, adjective. That's why it's linking verb. So the flowers were beautiful. And so were links, um, links the noun flowers to the adjective beautiful. And then the adjective beautiful modifies flowers. So the flowers were beautiful has the same meaning as beautiful flowers. So the flowers looked beautiful. The flowers smelled good. I feel good. Candy tastes sweet. This book sounds interesting. So adjectives, adjectives can follow B, and the adjective describes the subject of the sentence. Adjectives can follow a few other verbs. These verbs are called linking verbs. Common linking verbs are look, smell, feel, taste, and sound. So adjectives and adverbs. So adjectives, careful, slow, quick, easy, fast, hard, early, late, good. And adjectives uh, modify the noun. So Anne is a careful driver. John is a fast driver. Linda is a good writer. So all of these are adjectives. Adverbs modify a verb. And so therefore, adverbs usually end in L-Y. So carefully, slowly, quickly, easily. So Anne drives carefully. John drives fast. Linda writes well. And so um, an adjective describes a noun. Careful describes driver. An adverb describes the action of a verb. Carefully describes drives. Most adverbs are formed by adding L-Y to an adjective. The adjective form and the adverb form are the same for fast, slow, early, late. Well is the adverb form of good. So here, Linda drives well. You cannot say Linda drives good, okay? So therefore, well is the adverb form of good. And so here you have, do you know the difference between an adjective and an adverb? My hometown is small and quiet. He spoke quietly. Anne pronounces every word clearly. We like to go boating in clear weather. Boris makes a lot of mistakes. He's a careless writer. Boris writes carelessly. The teacher talked in easy, asked an easy question. I answered the teacher's question easily. So every time you have, oh, David is kind and thoughtful. He is a good person. Jake has poor eyesight. He can't see well without his glasses. 
So that's, that's so when we have an adjective, it modifies a noun. When we have an adverb with ly, it modifies a verb. So that's the difference between so every time you have a verb with ly, then that becomes an adjective. That becomes an adverb. So uh, chapter 15, possessive nouns. My friend has a car. So friend is a singular noun. And then the possessive form would be friends. My friend's car is blue. The student has a book. So the singular noun is student. And the possessive form is the student's book is red. So to show that a person possesses something, add an apostrophe S and S to a singular noun. And so here you have friends, students. So that indicates possessive. The students have books. The students' books are read. And so students is a plural noun. And then if you have students, if it's already plural, then you put the apostrophe after the S. If the, if the noun is singular, then you put the apostrophe before the S. So here you have a plural noun, then you put the apostrophe after the S. And so my friend's um, books are read. My friend's car is blue. So here you put the apostrophe after the S. My brother's uncle, or my brother's, uh, my father's uh, uncle, uh, my father's uncle is my uncle. My mother's grandmother is my grandmother. Okay, that didn't make sense, but okay. The students work hard. My cat's name is honey my cousins are traveling in spain my uncle's meeting them oh my uncle is meeting them in two weeks so this becomes my uncles this becomes a um, contraction so when you have a contraction you have apostrophe s so my uncle is meeting them in two weeks two of my friends so this becomes plural. Two of my friends live near me. My friends' names are Mark and Kevin. My best friend's name is Rob. So here you have friends. The three boys, oh, it's this one. The three boys' coats are in the closet. The boys, uh, the boys' Uh, the boy is riding his bike. So this becomes apostrophe S because here you have a contraction. The boy is riding his bike. We have three boys, that's A, and one girl in my family. Possessive, irregular, uh, plural nouns. The children's toys are on the floor. The, the store sells men's clothing. The store sells women's clothing. I like to know about other people's lives. So irregular plural nouns, children, men, women, people, have an irregular plural possessive form. The apostrophe comes before the final S. So the students, so regular possessive noun would be the students' books, but an irregular uh, plural possessive noun would be the woman, the women's books. And so normally, when you have a plural noun, usually uh, you have the apostrophe after the s. But in these, in these uh, noun, these nouns are these irregular. Uh, these plural nouns are irregular. So that's why the apostrophe comes after, uh, comes before the. Anyway, so these are all irregular plural nouns, and these are how you form the the possessive for these nouns. So. They're Mary's books. They're my friends, apostrophe S, books. They're my friends, and here you have the S apostrophe, books. They're children's books, so you have the apostrophe S. The children, they're children's books, so you have the apostrophe S. They're the woman's book apostrophe s so that's how you show that's how you show possess possession someone stole paul's bike do you know yuko's roommate 
I can't remember all of my roommates' names. My roommate's desk is always a mess. What is your parents' new address? It's important to respect other people's opinion. My husband's sister is visiting us this week. Excuse me, where is the men's room? That store sells children's toys. I have my father's nose. Where is Rosa's apartment? Does that store sell women's clothes? So that's how you would do um, possessive. So the, the book belongs to me. It is my book. It is mine. That book belongs to you. It is your book. It is yours. The book is mine. It's incorrect to say that is my book. So possessive adjective, my, your, her, his, our, there. So the possessive adjective always comes before the noun. Then a possessive pronoun then replaces my book. So a possessive pronoun would replace the possessive adjective and the noun to become it is my book, it is mine. So a possessive adjective is used in front of my book, in front of a noun. A possessive pronoun is used alone without a noun following it. So you would have mine, yours, hers, his, ours, theirs. This book belongs, I own this book. This book belongs to me. This is my book. This book is mine. She owns the pen. This pen belongs to her. This is her pen. This pen is hers. These books belong to them. These are their books. These books are theirs. He owns that pen. That pen belongs to him. That is his pen. That pen is his. You own that book. That book belongs to you. That is your book. That book is yours. We own those books. Those books belong to us. Those are our books. Those books are ours. So that's how you would do it. That's the difference between a possessive adjective like my book, and then my book gets uh, into a possessive pronoun, which be means this is mine. So that's how you would know, that's how you would do it. These books are ours. Those books are theirs. Our books are on the table. Theirs are on the desk. The raincoat is Tom's. That raincoat is Mary's. His is light brown. Hers is light blue. This notebook is mine. That one is yours. Mine has my name on it. Yours has your name on it. Jim's apartment is on Pine Street. Um, ours is on uh, Main Street, or our apartment is on Main Street. Either one is correct. Our apartment has three rooms. Uh, ours has four rooms. Or you could say our apartment uh, has four rooms. Uh, this is my pen. That one is yours. Uh, mine is in my pocket. Yours is on your desk. Our car is a Chevrolet. Uh, theirs is a Volkswagen. Ours gets 17 miles to the gallon. Their car gets 30 miles to the gallon. These books are hers. Those are his. Hers are on her desk. His are on his desk. So you get the idea. This is very, very easy stuff. So how would you use whose? Whose book is this? Mine. It's mine. It's my book. Whose books are those? Rita's. They're Rita's. They're Rita's books. Whose asks about possession? Whose is often used with a noun? Whose book as an A and B? Whose is this? Whose are, oh, whose is this? Whose are these? The speaker is pointing to a book, and the speaker is pointing to some book. So this means one book 
These means many books. So whose can be used without a noun if the meaning is clear? Who's your teacher? That's the contraction for who is your teacher. So whose and whose have the same pronunciation. So don't get them confused. Whose glasses are those? Whose teddy bear is this? Whose hat is that? Whose shoes are those? Whose keys are these? Oh, there's more of them, huh? Who's, who is your roommate this year? Whose pen is this? Who is on the phone? Who is that? And who is making so much noise? So chapter 16. So chapter 16 is making comparisons. And so when you compare two things, you have a comparative. And if you're comparing more than two things, you have a superlative. So A and B are the same. So A is the same as B. C and D are similar. C is similar to D. E and F are different. E is different from F. So here, are A and B the same? So you could say A and B are the same. What about A and C? A and C are different. And then that sort of thing. So here you have A is the same as or different as. Correct the errors. A rectangle is similar to a square. Paula, Pablo and Rita come from the same country. Rita and a girls and boys are different without the S. Girls are different from boys. Uh, my cousin is the same age as my brother. Dogs are similar to wolves. Jim and I started to speak at the same time. Oh, this is hard. Yeah, you just, uh, you have a ballpoint pen with, it, with blue ink. I have a blue point pen with blue ink. Your pen is like my pen. Your pen and my pen are alike. Our pens are alike. So like means similar to. Alike means similar. Like and alike have the same meaning, but the sentence patterns are different. So this is like that. This and that is alike. So here you would have, you and I have similar books. In other words, your books is, your book is like mine. Our books are alike. Mr. Chang and I have similar coats. In other words, Mr. Chang's coat is like mine. Our coats are alike. Ken and Sue have similar cars. In other words, their cars are similar. You and I have similar uh, hats. In other words, your hat is like mine. A town is like a city in some ways. A foot and a hand are alike in some ways. A dormitory and an apartment building are alike in many ways. A motorcycle is similar to a bicycle in some ways. So all of these are comparatives because we're comparing two things. So the comparative using er and more. Mary is older than, Mary is 25, John is 20. So Mary is older than John. Health is more important than money. So when we use adjectives, to compare two people or two things. The adjectives have special forms. So A, you have ER. So Mary is older than John. B, we use more in front of an adjective. So Mary, I mean, health is more important than money. And also if the adjective has several syllables, important. So here important has three syllables. Therefore, you would use more important than. And older, okay, old, only has one syllable. So therefore, you just add in older. You cannot say Mary is more old than John 
And you cannot say health is importanter than money. So here I'm going to go over syllables. So here, adjectives with one syllable, big, cheap, old. Then the comparative becomes bigger, cheaper, older. So add ER to one syllable adjectives. If an adjective ends in one vowel and one consonant, double the consonant, bigger, fatter, hotter, thinner. Here, adjectives that end in Y becomes I-E-R, so that the Y changes to I-E-R. So if an adjective ends in Y, change the Y to I and add E-R. And don't ask me why this is. This is just the way that British English has evolved through time. And then here, when you have adjectives with two or more syllables, famous, important, interesting, that's when you use more famous, more important, more interesting. Use more in front of adjectives that have two or more syllables, except adjectives that end in Y. If the adjectives end in Y, then you got to go I-E-R and I-E-R. Irregular adjectives, uh, irregular comparative forms. Good, bad, far becomes better, worse, farther, or further. So the comparative forms of good, bad, and far are irregular. And once again, don't ask me why that is. Don't ask me the logic. It's just the way British English has evolved. And if you want to learn more about the evolution of British English, you would have to study British history or the evolution of English. There are such classes in um, English, English departments. If you're going to major in English, then they will go over why this occurred, how the, how the language you know, evolved through time. From the time, if you were to read Shakespeare in its original play, you're going to notice that the English, it's called Middle English, has changed. You wouldn't understand the play. Then if you read the Shakespeare play in, a, in modern English, then you would understand the play. So that's why as English has evolved through time, it has also got a lot of gotten a lot of um, irregular and nonsensical and what seems to be illogical uh, grammar forms. So there's no rhyme and reason why good can't be go gooder than. It's just simply you don't use it with, with that, without a reason other than that's just the natural evolution of the language. So that's, that's just the way how people talk. And so if you want to know more, got to study linguistics and got to study the evolution of the English language, you got to go and study England's history because English, as everybody knows, came from Britain. And then the British will then direct you to, oh yeah, and, and British English came from the Anglo-Saxons and so on and so on. In other words, each person uh, will point the finger at another source. The further back you study uh, the English language, if you go all the way back, English sounds a lot like German. Yes, English was a, is a Germanic language. So when I studied um, Beowulf, Beowulf is written in that old German, old, old English. Sounds like somebody speaking German. So basically going back to, I think it's 1100 off the top of my head. So um, if you want to go back that far to study why these rules came about, be my guest. But it goes beyond this lecture. So this lecture, I'm just going to focus on how we do a comparative. So when you have one syllable, you say older than, smaller than, bigger than, then suddenly important, three syllables, more important than, easier, oh, it's got that Y there, easier than, difficult, more difficult than, because you got the three syllables. And why? Who knows? Longer than, heavier with an I-E-R than, more expensive than, sweeter than, hotter than, better than, worse than, farther than. So um, the Pacific Ocean is deeper than the Mediterranean. Love is more important than money. I'm lazier than my roommate. My brother is taller than I am. Iron is heavier than wood. My physics course is more difficult than my math course. Thailand is hotter than Korea. 
A gi giraffe's neck is thinner than an elephant's neck. It's warmer today than yesterday. Nadia's English is better than her husband's. The Nile River is longer than the Mississippi. A dog is more intelligent than a chicken. My little finger is shorter than my middle finger. The weather yesterday was worse than it is today. Your apartment is farther from school than mine. A horse is stronger than a person. Ken's hair is curlier than mine. The groom was more nervous at the wedding than the bride. And then the next section, so all of this are all superlative, uh, are all comparatives. So all of these are all comparatives where we're just comparing two things at a time. Now when we do superlatives, we're comparing more than two things. So in a comparative, my thumb is shorter than my index finger. So that's thumb and finger that you're comparing. So a comparative compares two things or people. But when we have a superlative, that's when we comparing. That's when we are comparing more than uh, two things. So superlative has est and most, and it compares three or more things or people. So here you would have an um, older than. And it, this is when you compare two things: older than, bigger than, prettier than, easier than, more expensive than, more important than, better than, worse than, farther than. But if you have more than two things, the oldest of all, the biggest of all, the prettiest of all, the easiest of all, the most expensive of all, the most important of all, the best of all, the worst of all, the farthest of all. So here you would have comparative would be longer than, so that's when you're comparing two things, and then the superlative, the longest, smaller, smallest, heavier, heaviest, more comfortable, most comfortable, harder, hardest, more difficult, most difficult, hotter, hottest. So that's how you would say that. Easier, easiest, cheaper, cheapest, more interesting, most interesting, prettier, prettiest, stronger, strongest, better, uh, best, worse, worst, uh, farther, farthest. So the Nile is the longest river in the world. I'm taking four classes. My history class is the most interesting of all. McKinley, oh, Mount McKinley in Alaska is the highest mountain in North America. The Sears Tower is the tallest building in Chicago. Lake Superior is the biggest lake in North America. February is the shortest month of the year. Pluto is, far, is the farthest planet from the sun. In my opinion, Seattle is more beautiful, is a more beautiful city uh, oh, it's the most beautiful city in the United States, okay, because there's more than two cities, okay, so this is a superlative, okay, most, most beautiful. In my opinion, Harry's Steakhouse is the worst restaurant in the city. In my opinion, the Doghouse Cafe has the best food in the city. Ken is sitting in the most comfortable chair in the room. The fastest way to travel is by airplane. When you feel depressed, laughter is the best medicine. Asia is the largest continent in the world. Australia is the smallest continent in the world. Sally ordered the most expensive food on the menu. Taking a taxi is the easiest way to get to the airport. I think good health is the most important thing in life. The Gateway Arch is the most famous landmark in St. Louis, Missouri. So that's 
how you would do a uh, compare a superlative. And so now we're going back to uh, so here, when you're doing a superlative, you're comparing more than two things. These are all superlatives because you're comparing more than two things, more than more than two people or things, either two either people or things. More than so here you have uh, tallest. Alice is the tallest. Linda is the shortest. Linda is then this one you're comparing to two people. Linda is taller than Alice, but shorter. Oh, here that's Karen. Karen is taller than Alice, but shorter than somebody else. Okay, so you you get the idea. So if it's two people, uh, if you're comparing two people, it's a comparative. If you if you're comparing three people uh, or more, then it's a superlative. So that's the difference between the two. And so using one of, the Amazon is one of the longest rivers in the world. The a Rolls Royce is one of the most expensive cars in the world. Alice is one of the most intelligent people. And so the superlative often follows one of, the most. And so here you have one of, the, and these are all superlatives, plus a plural noun because you have more than one um, you got many, many, many things. Okay, so when you have a superlative, you're comparing more than two things. So sometimes you have a plural noun to indicate more than one thing. Wow, stable, table of statistics. Using but, John is rich, but Mary is poor. The weather was cold, but we were warm inside our house. But gives the idea that, that this is the opposite of that. So here you would put a comma before but. So John is poor, but Mary isn't. So John is rich, but Mary isn't. Balls are round, but uh, boxes aren't. So but always means the opposite of the, of, of the positive. Here, making comparisons with adverbs. Kim speaks more fluently than Ali. Anna speaks the most fluently of all. Mike worked harder than Sam. Sue worked the hardest of all. Sue writes better than I do. Kim writes the best of all. So here, if you're gonna say a uh, comparative, you say more fluently than, more slowly than, more quickly than, harder than, faster than, earlier than, later than, better than. Then if you're going to have more than two people, the most fluently, the most slowly, the most quickly, the hardest, the fastest, the earliest, the latest, and the best. So that's, if you have more than two things, then you have a superlative. If you have um, two things, you have a comparative. So that ends pretty much uh, chapter 16. And so if you have any questions about the chapters 14, 15, and 16, feel free to email.